So we're approaching the end of 2018, getting into 2019, and some of you might be new to firearms and thinking, hey, I want to get into a surplus rifle of some sort. Uh, what's going to be some great options to get into that are still cost effective and are still going up in value, so might be a good investment too for the future? We're going to go over that with our top five choices of surplus rifles to consider investing in or purchasing. Uh, towards the end of 2018 or rolling in through the beginning of 2019. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. That's coming up right now. All right, so a couple things to cover about this list. Back when we did the six surplus handguns to buy in 2018, that actually got a lot of attention, and a lot of people in that video wanted me to make a video on the uh, top five surplus rifles that we would recommend in 2018. Now, one big difference between the handguns and the rifles is the handguns in that video, for the most part, or ha surplus handguns in general, are about what you can find on the market. That That is, what I mean by that is if you want to go into uh, an online retailer like uh, Classic Firearms or Aim Surplus or anything like that, you can generally find those for sale. Now, it's going to be a little bit different with surplus long guns and that pretty much all of them have sort of been purchased up. You don't really find them anymore. There are little spurts of surplus rifles that do become available on the market through retailers, but by and large, most of what you're gonna see in this list is stuff that you're gonna have to find on the secondary market. Now, I still recommend finding those because the general uh, market price on a lot of those firearms is still low enough, and we do still see them escalating every year. So these are five that we recommend jumping on now while the prices are still relatively low because in the next decade, I see them being uh, double what they are today, just if we look at historical trends. With all that being said, number five, the Enfield, number one Mark III, or number one Mark III Star, like you see here, or number four Mark I, which should be what they, more of the World War II pattern of Enfield. But Enfields in general have, I remember about eight years ago, uh, eight, nine years ago, going to gun shows, and you could find them every day, all day long, for two to three hundred dollars. Now, a pretty standard infield, you know, with import marks, which most of them are going to have, is going to run you in about the five to six hundred dollar range. Which, if you compare them to other bolt action rifles from World War II, like the 1903 Springfield, for example, uh, which have gotten up to like the thousand dollar mark, still relatively inexpensive. Now, there are a lot of infields that do pop up occasionally on retailer sites, but you can go on Gun Broker and like I said, still find these in good shape. You should be able to find them in the four to $500 range now if they're in like excellent condition and all matching and, and all of that. They do go up from there. Some manufacturers are more rare than others, like a, a number four Mark I that's made by Savage with US property marks is gonna go more uh, for more than like a physically or physically, however you pronounce it, uh, which was you know more common and more available, so all else being equal. One of the things I think that have kept the price on these down is the ammunition availability. There are a couple companies like PPU that do make 303 British, uh, so you can still get it, but it's gonna cost you at about a dollar a round. And so that expensive ammunition, I think has really uh, played a big part in at least keeping the prices down a little bit, but there is still an awesome amount of collectability it is a phenomenal rifle, still a lot of fun to shoot, uh, pretty much indestructible. Uh, you take it hunting if your state allows it. So really, really recommend it. Get on them before they get up to the, uh, the prices around the $1,000 mark, which is what I think they will be selling for in about the next 10 years. Coming in at number four is the Venerable Swiss K31. These are phenomenal rifles, uh, chambered in the 7.5 Swiss. Um, this is one of those rifles that you don't have to go very far back in time. Uh, I remember as, as short as two to three years ago, I remember my customers ordering these in through like Aim Surplus for like $320 shipped. In just two to three years time, these have doubled and they show no sign of slowing down in terms of value. I think there's a few reasons why these are going up so quickly. I think they, they came in in relatively good numbers. They were priced to move. Uh, and they, they pretty much sold out everywhere pretty fast. And there aren't a lot of these really, if you think about it, compared to like Mosin Nagants or Arasakas or anything like that. There's not really a lot of these in people's hands. If you go on Gun Broker and search in K31, you're not gonna find nearly as many live auctions as you would if you went and typed in like Mosin Nagant or 9130. So uh, the other thing is these are actually 
very, very, very well made. There are other YouTubers who have done videos like Iraq Veteran 88 who demonstrated that if a modern manufacturer like Ruger, for example, were to come out with this rifle today, with the amount of time and machining and materials and precision built into these, this would be a $3,000 rifle all day long. Now, currently, you know, at the end of 2018, we are seeing these selling in about the five to $600 range in good condition, plus or minus based on condition. If it's got slings, bayonets, troop tags, things like that will tend to add value. Uh, but you should be able to find these in around the five to $600 range generally, which is still a phenomenal deal on these. And again, they really show no signs of, of slowing down in terms of value. I think that even as early as two to three years from now, these things could be bringing eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars, just as they be, continue to be, get more and more difficult to find. So not only is it a nice piece of history, not only are they well made and fun to shoot, they do kind of fit that World War II role. Uh, even though Switzerland was a neutral uh, country during the Second World War, they were still a uh, you know it was still a military rifle issued through the 40s and actually through the 50s as well. And coming in at number three is the Yugoslavian. Slavian M48 and M47 Mauser rifles. Now these are patterned and actually some of the tooling was purchased from Germany. And these are patterned directly on the K98 Mauser action. There are a couple of slight differences, the way the sights are inleted, that the handguard on the stock and that sort of stuff are a little bit different than the German pattern, but they are very similar. Now, the great thing about the M47s and M48s is not only do you get a nice 40s and 50s era uh, Mauser, which is again very close to the German World War II Mauser, which is great for collectors, but you do get that really strong and robust uh, Mauser action. 8mm ammunition is still easy enough to find. There are a couple manufacturers that do make it today. They are really fun to shoot, very strong, and it would make a great hunting rifle or anything you want to do with it. Um, now, these again, I'm going to say in about the past 10 years, I like to go back about 10 years, um, I remember that you could find these for about $250 or so, $250, $300 in really good shape. Now they've kind of crept up to about between four and $500 depending on condition. So they are still going up in value and they still have a lot of room to increase in value, especially as their Mauser counterparts, mainly from Germany, are getting more and more expensive. Of course, people are seeing these as an alternative uh, to kind of fill that gap in the collection. You do see these pop up on retailer sites like Classic and AIM from time to time and usually in very small quantities. I know Century has brought in a few of these in the past few years, but for the most part where you're going to find these is used on uh, store shelves in your uh, local gun shop or you're going to find them on Gun Broker or Arms List. But again, a standard price on a good condition one should be around the $400 mark. I still think you're getting a lot of value and if you jump on one soon, uh, again, you could be sitting on a rifle 10 years from now that's worth six, seven, eight hundred dollars Coming in at number two is the SKS. Now, these were made in three different countries in this pattern. Uh, China, Yugoslavia, and Russia. Now, there were like the Albanian SKSs and the Egyptian Rashid, which are kind of similar, but they are not really this pattern SKS that we have here. Now, the Russian SKSs will be the most valuable, of course, and those you're seeing in about the six to seven hundred dollar range right now, followed by the Yugoslavian SKSs and the Norinko or Chinese or Sino SKSs, uh, tend to hover in about the four to five hundred dollar range depending on condition. And also uh, you know, matching numbers and that sort of stuff if they have the bayonet and <clears throat> or uh, kind of anything along those lines. Now, some of you who were on the scene back in the 90s might be scoffing at those high prices because you could buy these things all day long for like $69 with a case of ammunition to go with it. So these are one of those rifles that have gone way up. And again, if we go back just eight to 10 years ago, I remember seeing these things for like $250 all day long everywhere, which people then didn't want to pay because they remember the 90s getting them for half that. So it's about every 10 years we've seen these things pretty much double in price. I don't think it's going to be long before we see them get up in the seven, eight. I mean, I think the Russian ones are going to get up to the thousand dollar mark, and then I think the uh, Chinese and the Yugoslavian SKSs will get up to about the seven and eight hundred dollar mark um, as we go, you know, further in time. So again, the cheapest price you're going to find on a surplus gun is always the price today, um, and it'll go up uh, from there. So that's just what we've seen historically happen over and over and over. Now, speaking about the rifle itself. 7.62 by 39 ammunition, the same cartridge that the uh, is used in the AK-47, today in the United States is very plentiful. Now you can get the Red Army ammunition brought in through, through Romania, there's the Tula and uh, Wolf ammo from Russia, 
which I think just got stopped on the sanctions, but if that's the case, then of course you have, uh, you know, you have all the Red Army standard stuff coming in, which is very good ammunition and, you know, fires just fine in an SKS. These are wood stocks. They're all machined, very, very well made, sort of like the Swiss K31. Very high quality. You're not going to get a huge uh, amount of accuracy out of these. Keep in mind, they are a battle rifle with an intermediate cartridge, but still a lot of fun to shoot. You can take them hunting if your state allows it. Uh, a 10 round fixed magazine, but there are a lot of aftermarket parts to turn these into 30 round uh, 30 round magazines. I think Tapco makes a uh, conversion for that. But anyway, uh, this is one of those ones that would do well in anybody's collection, especially if you kind of like that Cold War era stuff. I know in Vietnam these were used pretty heavily, uh, especially the Chinese SKSs like this one here. So there is a lot of uh, kind of notoriety in that as well. But anyway, definitely I would jump on one of these sooner rather than later if you uh, could have a place for it in your collection. And coming in at number one, and I'm sure a lot of you could see this one coming, are the Mosin Nagant series of rifles. So you have the 9130, the M38, and of course the M44 carbine, which has the side folding bayonet, which I don't have one here to show you. These rifles have been and continue to be the cheapest option that you can get really on the surplus long gun market. If we go back eight to 10 years ago, these things were $89 to about $100 all day long. Uh, you could go into gun stores and find racks of them. You could go uh, online and just find endless amounts of these available online. You could buy them at any time. Again, if you paid for shipping, you might've paid about $100 shipped for one. Or this one here, I actually purchased about, like I said, 10 years ago, and I remember the price tag on it was $89 at the gun store I was at. In fact, they also had hex receiver uh, Mosin Nagants that they were selling for $99 or so only for $10 more, which my friend decided to buy and I decided to buy one of these. I'm like, what do I need to spend the extra 10 bucks for? Mosin's a Mosin. Now, of course, we see the hex receiver Mosin Nagants going for quite a bit more than the round receiver ones like you have here. Anyway, same with the carbines. These used to be a little bit more expensive just because of their availability, but we used to see these about 10 years ago, going for, uh, 10 years ago going for maybe 150 uh, now they're going for uh, around three to four hundred dollars. The 9130s are going between about two to three hundred. So we've literally seen these triple in value and we've seen these probably about double in value and just within the past eight to ten years. Again, they were everywhere. They still continue to pretty much, uh, you can still find them. You don't have to travel far to find one just because so many of these were brought in. Also, uh, there are some online retailers that eventually do pop up with some deals on these where maybe they get in a small shipment. Um, usually in pretty bad condition uh, and they're usually selling them pretty pretty high again I'm like around $300 if they're in good shape. Chambered in the 762 by 54 r The ammunition is not as easy to find as it once was as well. I remember you could buy this stuff online for like $90 I think for about 450 rounds shipped to your door. Now it's gone, gotten up to about 150 and for the most part you have to go to the private market to find the ammunition but there are so many uh, cases of this stuff loading around there. If you go on some of your local forums or gun broker you do not have to travel far to find the ammunition and there are a couple of manufacturers who do manufacture this ammunition brand new. Again you're going to be paying in the 75 cents to a, a, about a dollar a round for the new made stuff but again and jump on some of that surplus ammo. If you are considering purchasing one, I would definitely get on one now. They are a ton of fun to shoot. Keep in mind, these were standard issue, uh, the standard issue rifle for the Russians during the Second World War. There is a ton of historical relevancy in these rifles. They are, there are so many different variations that you, I mean, you could spend your lifetime collecting Mosins alone and not even scratch the surface. Uh, very long barrels on these M9130s. A very accurate, very robust action, just a phenomenal rifle. Still though, for I mean, going gun broker, $250 still is still a phenomenal deal for what you're getting. And it's not gonna be too long before these things are up to the five and $600 range like the Arasakas and like the Enfields and things like that. So, I mean, again, now is the time. Uh, if you're looking for one, it's never gonna be as cheap as it is today because they're just not coming in anymore. But anyway, that is our number one spot, the Mosin Nagant. I'm sure probably a lot of people would agree with that. Uh, it does kind of hit the top of most people's list. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on these guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. Again, if you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section. Also, if you disagree with this list and maybe would have picked something else, go ahead and let me know by leaving that down in the comment section too. It might be good for other people who are new to the surplus firearms to kind of see some more options available on the market. 
If you like this video, please go ahead and hit leave the uh, like button. And also, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Again, I am Chris with CheapGunsUSA.com and Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.